I am Bob Cottrell, curator of the Henny History Room here at the Conway Public Library. And we're going to be talking today about the history of the library and its construction and how it's changed over the years. And one of the first things I'd like to do is point out the um, cornerstone and our marker for the National Register um, nomination that we got. And here you see the cornerstone, which somebody pla placed a uh, time capsule which has yet to be removed. So that will be something for future history. So you can see here in the cornerstone, it has the date 1900. And this is the um, plaque showing that we're on the National Register of Historic Places. And you can look up the uh, report that's on the internet with all the photographs, historic photographs, as well as all the text about uh, the documenting the history of the library. Here you can see the um, weather vane that is on top of the cupola that holds the clock. And then down below, you can see the dentals that are um, made in metal. And then below that, you see the brown stone and all the carved work that uh, was done for the front entrance of the, uh, the original entrance of the library. And what's fascinating to me is that all of those ornamentations have specific names. Like you see the clock faces, and then there's like a funny little scroll on top of them. Those are called lambrequins, and that comes from the Latin for lamb's tongue. And if you've ever looked at a lamb's tongue, it has that shape and design. As the design goes around to the, to the bottom, sort of, of the clock piece, there's what's known as the Greek key. And these have very interesting sort of symbolic meanings and stuff to them, and you find them all over the, the place. So you see here, there's a, there's a series of dentals or dentilations, which refers to um, the idea of teeth, like a dentist. And so in the architectural vocabulary, that's the term that's used to indicate those little teeth-like shapes that come down. And you can see that they get smaller, they diminish in size just a little bit from above the, where it says Conway Public Library and the pediment, the triangular shape part and then above the doorway, and then above the columns there, the small columns that are in the front. So this is the Conway Honor Roll, tribute to those who served in the World War, 1917 to 1919. And it has a list of all the people from Conway uh, area that were involved in that. And um, there's actually a number of women that are on the list. And those people with the stars indicates that they died in the service of their country. So this is uh, Teresa Blanche Duffy, who was one of the women who volunteered during World War I. She was a nurse in France. And uh, we have an interesting story of her on our website. We also have all of the names of this and every other Veterans Memorial in Conway uh, typed up, transcribed, so that you can find anybody's name that you want to. And then we also started working on the histories of all these people and looking into Ancestry.com and their war records and things like that. So we have a lot of information about this, happy to share. Here we are at the Conway Public Library Park. And this was used uh, during World War II as a place for an observation tower for aerial observation for Nazi airplanes. And it, the observation tower, as I understand it, was just beyond these bushes in that tree in the corner of the park. After the war was over, the bottom part of this tower was turned into a warming tower, a warming space for ice skating rink that would flood this area right in here and ice, uh, ice skate throughout the winter. Here is the D. Baker upholstery, upholstering building, a wonderful remnant of a great and traditional past when you think about things that were made or repaired right here in Conway. If you think about your own shoes, um, I'm sure they were not made here in Conway. And uh, if you were to have a problem with them, you'd probably just throw them away and buy new shoes. You wouldn't try to get them repaired. So here we are at the Davis Baker Walkway. It's, uh, helped fund through the uh, family, and now serves as a wonderful sidewalk for the park here at the Conway Public Library. Here we are outside the entrance of the Conway Public Library. We do a program which we can do on Zoom or we can do in person for schools and community groups. We do these absolutely free for people around here. 
And one of the things we do is we bring the group out here and we ask them to look around and to see if they were, imagine if they were settlers and to think about what kind of trees here, which of these trees would you use to cut and use for fence posts? You certainly wouldn't want to do the pine because if you take pine and make fence posts out of it, it only lasts for about five or 10 years. But there's actually a tree surrounding here that if you cut and turn into fence posts, the fence posts will last 50 to 100 years. There's a tree over here that you can make rope out of. There's another tree over here that you can tap for turpentine. There's another tree over here, if you tap it and boil it, you'll get sweet birch beer. So this is a way of learning about history through nature. Here we are in the Great Hall of the Conway Public Library with its magnificent uh, skylight, these wonderful quotes that are written in gold all around the outside, the great woodwork. But here we're going to focus on the paintings. This is painting of uh, Reverend Nathaniel Porter. He was the first parson or preacher settled here in the town of Conway. On the opposite side, we have a family and the mother and the father and the daughter. And she's in this wonderful dress with a flower that she's holding in her hand. And the necklace, we know from the color, is made out of coral, red coral. And this was considered to be a healthy thing for kids to have and to wear. Here we have a painting called Making Soap by Benjamin Tupper Newman. And there's a number of things that are interesting about this painting. One is that it was in the Columbian Exhibition uh, in Chicago. And uh, it was then moved with the building in which it was in. He was a main painter. So the main exhibition building was taken to a part, shipped over here um, in train cars and re-erected at Poland Springs, which was then a big resort. And the building is still there and they're turning it into a museum. And what they're doing here is they're not cooking soup. They're actually making soap. And in the background, you can see the mountains of Freiburg. But the soap making process starts with leaching rainwater through ashes and collecting it. So that's what they're doing in the barrel there. And then they mix it with pig fat. And it, through this chemical process, it turns into soap that you use to clean yourself with. So just think, if you're using the original type of handmade soap, which was common during the time period, and even into the early 20th century, you're basically taking pig fat and fireplace ashes and mixing them together to make yourself clean and to wash your hair. In this corner of the library, we have a little display about Thomas Silloway, who was the architect of the original library. And there's a plaque here that's shown. And the original street out in front of the library was named for him, Silloway Street. And in this little detail, this photograph here, you can see a print that he did to uh, show what the concept of the library would look like. And we had that print restored. And here is the original print of the library by Thomas Silloway. And if you look carefully, along here is like a fencing that goes all along the top of the roof, below the clock tower, and above the main entrance door. And that was removed at one point, but some of the panels were saved, and we'll take a close look at those. This is a silk flag from the Custer Post of the, vet of the Grand Army of the Republic, which was a Civil War Veterans uh, Society. And so this Custer Post was right around the corner um, at the Redmond's Hall, just down the street on Washington Street. This is an enlargement of a print called Mount Washington from the Valley of Conway. And it was printed, the original print was only about that size, and it was printed by a gentleman named J.H. Smiley, based on a painting from Kensett. And here you can see Mount Washington, Mount Adams, you can see the ledges over here, Cathedral Ledge, White Horse Ledge. You could, underneath here would be the main street of North Conway. The fields, known as Intervales, and the stone walls are actually shown that were out there to separate the livestock. And here's some of the livestock feeding the sheep, the shepherd, the trails. And over here is the complex of North Conway's buildings. We have the old church. And we have the academy building, which is no longer there. 
but it's a very distinctive four corner, four points on the corner um, of the top of the roof. This painting here is by Ernest Brown, and it was donated by the artist. It is called Postern Gate Number no. Four, A Wish for Spring. And you can see it's the early spring time period, and it has a series of five stone posts. And here you can see the marks of the tools that made the post, just like the Washington Boulder. And you can see here where there were holes drilled in to put uh, different parts of a fencing unit. But this is known as a livestock gate. It can be left open like this, and the animals such as cows and sheep don't like to put themselves between these narrow openings. And so you don't actually have to have a gate here. This is enough to deter them from going through that. And then you can see the fencing, uh, wire fencing here on either side that would extend along the edge of the property. This is a portrait of a Cathedral Ledge and it was designed to show rock climbers the various trails that are on the face of Cathedral Edge. So these are sort of, instead of a horizontal hiking trail, these are vertical climbing trails, and they're all numbered with these really wonderful names. And then this is a view of it from the top. It kind of shows the different aspects of the topography. From the historic perspective, what I like to focus on is a couple things is one, the name Cathedral Ledge actually comes from this little corner here, which is a cave that is in the side of the, of the wall. And according to sources that Brian, uh, stories that Brian Wigan heard, this little cave was used for church services, hence the name Cathedral, and they would bring a wooden pump organ uh, powered by pedal, foot pedals and have church services in this little cathedral. And then this part here, this sort of a triangular shape, all of the rocks that were um, broken down by frost and thaw every year come down and hit this angle. And this is called a talus slope. It has a certain angle that naturally occurs. And in 1922, the first winter carnival was done here in North Conway. And they created a ski jump right on here on the talus slope. We have some photographs I'll show you of that. And then what you can't see, but rocks that broke out of the cathedral came down and created a pile of these big giant rocks. And so underneath the cathedral was this area that was always dark and cold and snow and ice would stay there for many months in the early summer. And they called that Devil's Den. And these were all tourist attractions, um, both then in the 19th century and now. So these are some of the foundation stones that were taken from the Washington Boulder. And here you can see the marks, uh, tool marks for the feathers and wedges. And so this is the size of a block and it's probably twice as wide as this. And then it's probably two or three times as long as this. So that's the size of the blocks. And this is what was all around the base of the library, the original library when they built it. And then on top of that, they used bricks, and you can see pieces of metal and more bricks in an arch shape to support the library building. And there's an interesting staircase. So here's an example of the original material that was done on the top of the roof, kind of like a balustrade or a fencing around it. And it looks very solid and strong, and it is made out of copper and you can see the corrugated uh, strips here so it does add some strength but the appearances can be deceiving as you see it's very thin and it's hollow in the back and so it's stamped with a huge machine that would take a piece of sheet copper and stamp this in and then it was soldered in the corners to piece it together and you can see just little tiny nail holes that would be used to brace it against a piece of wood or something. In the back you can see the original copper color that was protected from the elements. So this is what the roof and all of the copper elements on the top of the um, Conway Public Library would have originally looked like, probably a higher shine to it. And then over the years, a uh, verdigris or a copper type rust would turn it green with the weather.